If you already have or are considering injected CO2 in your planet aquarium, there is undoubtedly something you've heard when it comes to surface agitation and water movement. The more you have, the more CO2 you are losing out of your water system. That's not 100% accurate, and I'm going to explain why. Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and today we're going to do a short but kind of fun sciencey lesson about gas exchange in our aquariums. Now, I want to get some caveats out of the way. We are not going to go super sciencey. I will leave that to actual scientists, folks like Jason from Primetime Aquatics, who has a number of really cool science-oriented lessons to teach us aquarists, us, us not scientific dum-dums how to understand the actual science that's happening much better. But what I am going to do is give a brief understanding at a kind of high level what is going on with gas exchange and why it's not as negative as a lot of people like to make it out to be. Context. Because I get lots of questions surrounding this. Context is this. A majority of our plants in the aquarium hobby, like the ones behind me here, are grown immersed in nature, which means that they are not 100% submerged. Typically, only the root systems are submerged. They're growing out of water, or there's some other kind of emergent growth that is occurring, which means they are exposed to atmospheric CO2. So they get significantly higher concentrations of CO2 that are up here in the atmosphere, like the air we breathe, than we can put into a water system. Why does that matter? Well, injecting CO2 came around in order to help increase those levels of CO2 in water to get much more lush growth to make some plants that just can't exist without CO2 able to exist 100% submerged the entire time in our aquariums to make things pretty, plain and simple, to do things that we could not previously do. Then we get into this, this concept that it tells us that the more water movement we have, especially that surface agitation, this is creating more and more gas exchange. And because we're injecting CO2, we're pushing more CO2 into the water than can naturally be there. When this gas exchange occurs, we are losing CO2. That is partially correct. We're not losing as much as a lot of folks like to make it out to be. And I'm not gonna call out names, it's something like that. It's just kind of a common occurrence. So let me explain how this works. There's a couple of scientific things that we need to know. One is called Henry's Law. You don't need to know the exact, you don't need to know the formulas, but the basics of Henry's Law are this. The solubility of any given gas is determined by pressure. Okay? So depending on how much atmospheric pressure is present, and depending on the constant which is the, the solubility rate of the gas, or the pressure, uh, so we have pressure and solubility, we can determine how much gas can be put into a liquid. And it's roughly like this. Let us say that a container of liquid, a one liter container of liquid, can hold one molecule of CO2 under only standard atmospheric pressure. But if you double that pressure, CO2 is really handy. It makes it easy. You can double that number. And if you double again, you double again. So at two atmosphere, you would have two molecules. At four atmosphere, you would have four molecules and so on. Now that seems like it's pretty easy, right? But it also works in reverse. So something like when you open a bottle of soda, for example, all those bubbles that are coming out, that is CO2 escaping the liquid. And the same thing does happen in our aquarium. Yes, the CO2 we're injecting into the liquid does, as it is exposed to the atmosphere, because it's not under significant pressure, will escape the liquid. However, because the gas exchange is occurring because of water movement, we are also introducing other CO2 from the atmosphere around us into the liquid, the water in our aquarium. Now, this is covered in some parts in a combination of Henry's Law and Dalton's Law. Dalton's Law is 
a little complex, but a little simple at the same time. But the basics we need to know is you can determine the atmospheric pressure of a mixture of gases by summing up the pressure of all of the gases present based on their weight. That sounds complex, right? But basically what it says is if the air we breathe, right, is currently at one atmospheric pressure, which make it simple, and the air is 75% nitrogen, then we would have 0.75 atmospheres of nitrogen gas pressure. Does that make sense? So we can basically find the pressure of each individual gas as they are present in the atmosphere. And if we do some really complex math, we can figure out how much CO2 from the atmosphere, which roughly sits at about 400 parts per million in most parts of the world right now, is being introduced into the water with that gas exchange and surface agitation. So despite the fact that we are losing some CO2, we are still introducing CO2 at the same time. That's interesting, right? There's one extra part here, and that is carbonic acid acid. How does acid show up? Well, it's actually really simple. When CO2 is introduced to water, so CO2 and H2O, there is this interesting process that occurs where basically put the oxygen portion of a water molecule attacks the CO2 and absorbs it, creating h 2 CO3, which is carbonic acid. Now, carbonic acid, when it's in water, very quickly decomposes into carbon dioxide gas and water again. But it is a reaction that occurs that we need to pay attention to. And it is in part this reaction that is steadily acidifying the ocean water that we have out. So that one of the problems we have is that the oceans, because of the amount of carbon that is present in the air, are acidifying. They're not quite as alkaline or as high on the pH scale as they normally are. Their pH is dropping over time because they're exposed to more and more atmospheric carbon dioxide, which is creating that carbonic acid, right? Because there's this natural reaction. Uh, it's a uh, called an anhydrize. And this is the one term I don't remember, <laughs> but we don't need to know the actual term. Um, comments will probably help me out. But basically, because it's creating acid and it's consuming some other minerals that are present, that's what's bringing the pH of the oceans down. Even though that carbonic acid, when it's in water, decomposes very, very quickly and splits again into water and CO2. But because of the extra minerals that are naturally present that harden that water, that increase that pH and make it more alkaline in the ocean, that carbonic acid is present and is a part of its decomposition, is consuming some of those minerals before it splits back into safe CO2 and water. Again, this goes back to our, if you open a bottle of soda, now that it is exposed to the atmosphere, the carbonic acid that is inside that liquid that keeps the CO2 and the water combined into a single molecule quickly begins to decompose. And that's why we see all those lovely little CO2 bubbles in something like our sparkling waters, our sodas, all those kinds of things. Science is very interesting. Chemistry is very interesting. If you really want to dig deeper, those are the three I would start with. Henry's Law, Dalton's Law, and then understanding... Uh, as a part of Henry's law, how CO2 interacts with water to form carbonic acid and then almost immediately begins to decay and split back into the two. In the end of all this, right, what's, what's missing? We often don't hear the discussion about how the fact that there's a significant amount of CO2 available in the atmosphere. And as that gas exchange occurs, we are losing some CO2, yes, but we are also introducing new CO2 along with the other gases, nitrogen, oxygen, etc., that are present in our atmosphere into our water systems. 
So despite the fact that we have gas exchange occurring, we're not really losing that much CO2. Are we losing some? Yes. But I think a lot of people make it out as if we're going to lose like all your CO2. And that's not the case. The rate at which we typically inject CO2 into our aquariums is significant enough, despite the fact that we're not putting these aquariums under any exerted pressure. And it requires pressure to keep more and more uh, gas inside a fluid. But because we're not doing those things, the levels are going to stay relatively stable. This is part of why that uh, natural carbonic acid thing causes our pH to drop while we're injecting CO2, and then it rises back up after the CO2 is exited the water, right? These All these little cool sciencey things. So what's the end lesson here? Bentley, you're babbling about some science stuff. What does it matter? Don't stress too much when it comes to the amount of agitation you have at the surface of your aquarium. Even if you're injecting CO2, I inject CO2 in this tank behind me. I have a big Awaze filter and multiple air driven sponge filters in this tank that all create surface agitation. I have other tanks that have significant surface agitation because I personally like to encourage gas exchange. And yet I inject CO2 into those tanks or have previously. And when I'm doing so, there is a notable difference in the growth density and color of my plants because additional CO2 gas is present in the aquarium. That's present for the plants. They can do more, etc., etc., etc. All the things that we normally attribute injecting CO2 into our aquarium with. It isn't until you get to really, really, really aggressive levels of surface agitation. We're talking like true river system tanks. Uh, if you've ever seen it, there's this cool aquarium in Germany where it's like effectively a big hill to simulate a river and it has immense water flow going in this river system tank. You have to get to those levels of surface agitation to really significantly lose so much CO2 that your injected CO2 can't keep up. And almost regardless of how large the water system is, if you set up your tank correctly, you're going to maintain the CO2 levels you need in order to boost your growth, get that great color, get that wonderful density, and end up with a beautiful, planted, high-tech tank. So, with that being said, that's my lesson for you guys. A little simple one. I wanted to go a little sciencey. I had this awesome question on my live stream and just decided, hey, I need to do a video on this. Because I think often <laughs> a lot of people go a little overboard and embellish on how much CO2 gas is lost because of exchange and encourage some things that could actually lead to more dangerous scenarios for your fish, which is to say, if something goes wrong, uh, you have a regulator that has an issue and it starts gassing off your entire tank really quickly, the difference between that very almost no surface agitation that a lot of people will preach and having good surface agitation could be the difference between whether or not your fish survive should something really horrible go wrong with your CO2 system. And the loss of CO2 that's going to occur is not so significant that the plants are going to lose all the effect of CO2. The CO2 is going to be in your water. You're going to see its effect. It just might not be as concentrated as it possibly could be. But the higher that concentration gets, the riskier it is for our fish. So if you're trying to keep a nice balance, agitate that water surface and you'll do just fine. That's it, guys. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoy little like pseudoscience lessons like this, I know it's not super sciencey. Uh, if you really want to do that, totally check out Jason over at Prime Time Aquatics. He's got some fantastic content that digs into some of the science. He's an actual science teacher. He knows his stuff. Um, but if you like some more high level, just basic understanding and you like more videos like this, let me know in the comments down below. Give me a little like. All the usual YouTuber things. Tickle the YouTube algorithm. Let Papa YouTube know, hey, I like this stuff. I like this guy. Maybe consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And stay awesome.